Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 11 of the anime series, Tuwaru Hikushi Ino Koyuda. And this was a very compelling episode as far as I was concerned, picking up right where we left off in the heat of battle, and we see Noriaki and Benji flying in toward that giant Sky Clan uh, barge. It is the equivalent of Isla's main barge, and they have a smokescreen hiding their position. So, essentially, you have these two student pilots risking life and limb to get as close as they can to configure what the coordinates are of this enemy vessel and get that back to Isla's warship so they can take it down. And they do so successfully, but not without Benji losing his right hand. It's literally, like, blown off. And uh, because of the scarf his girlfriend Sharon gave him, he was able to tie his arm off so it wouldn't bleed, you know, he wouldn't bleed to death. And they just barely survived through the use of, uh, you know, their parachutes and Benderis, one of their teachers, flying a plane, you know, sort of through the thick of it, to pick them up, to get them back to safety. Benderis ends up injured, of course, as a result, but it's just miraculous that their teacher um, was there to capture them, to get them back to safety. And this is, you know, all going on with Kalel and Ignacio giving them support, but there's only so much they can do. They have to really take on the fighters, the action fighting side of the situation as uh, Noriaki and Benji's plane was off trying to get the coordinates configured and everything. And Ignacio is just a master with his weapon. I mean, he's taking out plane after plane, as we saw toward the end of the last episode, and it just gets that much more compelling to me as they have taken down successfully this enemy barge. You know, we see that this is not the limit of the Sky Clan's fleet. There's still a lot of oncoming uh, onslaught of singular plane fighters and everything like that. They're firing missiles at the Isla Fleet's main barge and everything, and you basically see Kalel get to the point where he is, he, he cannot stand it anymore. He doesn't want to see anyone else left crying through the loss of friends and stuff like that. He is determined now to take down as many of the enemy planes as he can, and they do so successfully, one after the other. But there gets a point where that enemy fleet, that entirety of that enemy fleet, gets really close, and they're almost taking out the main Isla Barge. And of course, as we see in this episode, for some reason, Nina Viento, Claire Cruz, is on board, and she has resigned herself to the fact that she's probably going to die in this place, in this time, as a result of all of this. And so she's kind of prompted to go out and say some final words to Kalel. You know, his plane gets right up close, she walks out onto the deck, the main deck of this barge, and she's kind of screaming across the sky at him that she truly apologizes for having been involved as Nina Viento, as a child child in the loss of his parents. His parents were, of course, put to death, as we've seen in the series, and she feels responsible. She feels downright evil for having participated and not having had, you know, gall enough to speak out against it, just going with the motions and being this sort of, you know, wind waker that she is. That ability has been quelled in her. You know, she lost that ability, and I think that has to do with guilt and sort of just having to, uh, you know, exist by omission that she was Nina Viento in the first place. And through this conversation, this semi-one-sided conversation, she basically, you know, professes her her true love for Kalel. You know, no matter what odds we've had in our lives, no matter our backgrounds, all of that stuff, I've fallen in love with you, and I want you to know that. I want you to survive, and all this kind of stuff is what she tells him, just as oncoming enemy fighters are about to take her down, and she sort of spreads her arms, ready to be killed, uh, ready to, you know, go on into the ever after, and at the last second, of course, Kalel and Ignacio take out the enemy fighter, and as they fly in close to her, he says one word live. And this is enough. This is enough to prompt her to actually have a lack of guilt now. To understand that he heard everything she said, he feels the same way about her, we have to survive this. And so suddenly, that Wind Waker ability that she has been without for so many years starts to come back. And I love the fact that she's, you know, removed her wig at this point, and it's a clear cut, you know, that it's Claire. It's not this fake persona, Nina Viento. It's Claire choosing and freeing up this power within herself, and through the use of this power, she saves the main Isla Barge. She gets it returned home safely. Uh, you know, as I say, as we saw, basically Benji and Noriaki are returned home safely. And Kalel and Ignacio too 
make it back home. The battle was aided, I might add, and you know, not to have forgotten, but that entire fleet of seagull uh, sort of moniker wearing airplanes and ships and such like that, that we saw, you know, referenced in a previous episode, they came in at the last minute, much like the cavalry in the old Western films and stuff, um, to help, to aid, and, and that is what really made this a landslide battle for the Isla people to win against the Sky Clan, and uh, it's very interesting to me. It's like this entire Seagull monikered fleet is a very much a mystery, you know. Um, as I understand it, I think there's a spin-off movie that tells the story a little more in depth about that particular side of things um, that coincides with this anime series. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the battle was won, but not without repercussions or a further cost. As Kalel's voiceover says toward the end of the episode, even though they were successful, even though the battle was successful successfully won, there's still another price that's going to have to be paid by the final episode. And so it'll be really intriguing to see just exactly what that price is. I have a feeling it has something to do with putting a divide between Claire Cruz and Kal-El once and for all, something along those lines. You know, maybe she's going to have to sacrifice herself, or perhaps she's going to have to go and become a sort of ambassador to this whole fleet with the Seagull moniker. Fana Lavam is apparently the name associated with it, an emperor of sorts. Uh, don't know whether that's, you know, male or female. Maybe she'll have to marry this person, you know, to keep peace between the two societies. Who knows exactly? Um, but there is a price that is going to be overhanging the end of the series, and it'll be interesting to see what it is. So, yeah, otherwise, I really enjoyed this episode. Can't wait to see how it all wraps up, and that'll be it for me on this. I hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.